Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope this finds you well to begin with our physical week of Aries. I hope all of you were able to read the post for today, which its topic is initiation, initiation. So I know that for that many of you um, know me from the series, the serious initiation in Gaia, um, and had no idea about what it was before. Just to let you know, uh, when we were talking with the people from Gaia, what would be the name for the series? Um, I said some some words, and eventually one of the of the of the words that they said it was the best one was initiation um because actually um that is what we are doing i guess that that is the summary of everything that we do every day of all information that's why uh, is the topic we are going to talk about today so first of all, what initiate, initiation means. Initiation um, comes from the word um, uh, inire uh, in Latin. Uh, that is two words. One is in, which is inside, and the other one is um, ire, that means to go. Hmm? So inire means to uh to to start to move to start to move forward basically is that the the concept so initiation talks about the concept the action of starting to move forward hmm? that would be the the key of this so in our cultures today we have this word initiation related to two main uh, concepts one of them is in educational aspects and the other one is related to um, hermetic uh, concepts, okay? Um, so let's go to understand both of them so we can understand the rest of the information. So regarding the first topic, which is education, we use the word initiation to uh, refer the moment when we begin or the introduction of topics of information that we are starting to learn like initiation on mathematics initiation of, on music initiation on medicine so we speak about initiation um we speak about the initiation of things that we are gonna learn from or gonna learn about. Um, so basically that's an initiation in terms of education, hmm? to start to doing something that you didn't know before. So um, the other way besides the educational way is the hermetic uh, concept that we have and um, the, the hermetic initiations. And it's related with education because hermetic is not something that is closed. That's how we see it today, something that is, uh, that is closed to others. But hermetic comes from the name Hermes. Hermes is the name of the Greek god of communication, of teaching. Mm -hmm. So he was the one giving information to everybody. That Hermes that we know in Egypt as Thoth and we know in, um, in the Roman culture as Mercury. So Hermes was the one that gave the information to the people to, uh, to teach to, for them to learn everything. So what happened? When the monotheistic arrives to Europe and, and, and the Mediterranean, the, all the region starts to persecute, to go behind this 
free thinkers and th these uh, people that were studying in public uh, squares. So, um, so they considered them wrong, something that was against God. So that's why the hermetic Hermes information start to be close. Occultism. So they were hiding. That's what it means. So not to get killed, basically. Okay. So that's why from that moment, they started to be like a very close, um, 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 very close societies and, and studies that, um, that they did this kind of initiations that uh, most of the religions called like satanic. The Christians start to call them that they were doing things for the devil because they couldn't get what they were doing exactly. And that's why the ceremonies of initiations started to be, from our point of view today, like something really weird, hmm? something from the devil, kind of. So I, I hope that you got the idea of how it came. But as you see, both of them are related with the process of learning, with education. Hmm? So the process of initiations has been a long story. So we have to go um, way behind in time to understand the process of how, how initiation became to be what we know today. So as I said, today we have initiation to or in according to issues, topics that we are going to learn about. So going back in the, in the history, the initiations to something, to the studies, were something really forbidden during a long time in our history. So what they had to do was to organize this kind of uh, puzzle that the people had to, to solve in order to show that they really had the attributes to or, or the will to go and study this information, that it was not someone like an enemy hiding to kill them, okay? So that's why they did this kind of test that were like, uh, like following clues so they could, they could really get into this occultism um, studies. So basically in the last centuries, the idea of doing this kind of test for initiation uh, are related to, um, to this uh, test to protect the universities that were hidden in the underground, in the, in the shadows. So these kind of initiations were brought by the Kabbalistics philosophy in the, in the Judaism. Why? Because inside the great religions of, the, of monotheism, the Kabbalah uh, was one of the teachings that were making questions, that were telling people to doubt about all the things, even to doubt about the creation. So this is totally against what the main uh, religions like Islam or Christianism were talking about. These two others were about certainty and faith in God. And the Kabbalah was about, we don't know, I don't know, maybe, perhaps, you know. So, so because of these questions, the main religion started to take Kabbalah as something really wrong, as something that is from the devil. Hmm? So that's why they started to the, 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 the hidden universities, the hermetics university started to use the Kabbalah, uh, the Kabbalistic as a way uh, to create this hidden map so that people could find the, the, the hidden universities. Okay, so that's why also uh, in England, they, start, they started to call all these bad societies that were hidden, as the cabal, cabal because of the Kabbalah. So today we have a misunderstanding of what is really the cabal, because a lot of people are saying that they are the bad ones, but this is an idea from the Christianism that started to call like this, the people that were studying in the underground. 
So in the in the past 500 years, when the Renaissance started, we were also still in the Inquisition. So in Europe, the Inquisition was so strong that uh, they were persecuting all these free thinkers. And in that same situation, the Renaissance started again as a way to look for something different. They brought all the concepts from the Middle East, from Greece, in arts, philosophy, the way of thinking. So they started to change everything, but they also were persecuted. So this is why they started to hide themselves until they were able to show their truth. Because remember, in the Renaissance, one of the main things that we can know or remember about is how they started to do all these statues again, nudes like in Greece. And of course, in the Inquisition, they were persecuted. So it was impossible to, to do it until the, the, the culture began so uh, strong. Mm -hmm. but, um, but the whole uh, thing uh, in, during the Renaissance created the idea that these students were doing occultism, they were hiding, and that was kind of the same as Satanism for the religion, okay? So in the last 300 years, late 1700s, the Illuminism started to also spread in Europe, but they were persecuted again, again and that created the idea of the Illuminati, uh, okay, in, the, in, in that time. So they were persecuted and they were hidden doing these studies until laicism started in the States after revolutions. Before the Illuminism, way much before, we had also the Freemasons. The Freemasons, the uh, Rosacruz, you say like this, um, the people from Malta, um, the um, Templars, they were all parallel movements of the Christianism that kept the traditions of the initiations from way before. Rosicrucians, thank you. Until just 200 years ago, there was no universities. There were mostly the um, religious teachings but there was no, there were not really universities as we know them today. That we have public universities, private universities. We have all this kind of knowledge um, uh, of all the many things. Um, so, uh, but before the universities were prohibited, so they were hidden. Hmm? That's why in order for a student to reach the universal knowledge, they had to go through tests of initiations before and tests and initiations after. So um, the most known university that was hidden in Europe and also in, in, in the world, in the Americas, was the Freemasons. The Freemasons we're following 33 initiations to reach the 33 degree. Mm -hmm. So what they, were, what they were doing was exams to pass the test in each level. So now think about the university, it's the same. You have to study, you have a test, an exam, and you have to do it right in order to go um, um, in order to go to the next level, the next year, and so on, you go learning. So you go through these 33 steps, and in each one you have an initiation to tell you that you had gone through the next level. Hmm? So this, this basically was that, but uh, of course that the... Um, that then they, they started to use it for power, for positions in politics, and so on. But basically, this all was made in order to learn, to access to the universal knowledge. Hmm? 
Hmm? So of course that um, that today is really easy to go to university um, for the countries that has public university, of course, the ones who doesn't have, maybe you have to become masons to to pay it, uh, to pay for it. But um, but um, the countries that we have uh, um, free university, public university, sometimes we have to remember how important was um, how important it is to have that because just two hundred years ago, this was an impo this was impossible. Hmm? This was uh, almost impossible to to reach the universal knowledge as we can do today. Initiation is basically basically to learn something new. That's what it really means to learn something new. So uh, to initiate in something new. But when we listen this word in the spiritual world, it's usually related to um, usually related to weird stuff because the initiations are done in an environment related to a culture, a religion, a tradition by history. So that's why, for example, if uh, now we 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 naturalize the the um, the concept that Christian people every Sunday they go and drink and eat the blood and the body of their savior. When someone from the outside listens to that, it's like, whoa, wh what are you telling to me? You know, it's like, why they eat him? You know, so, so it's really weird. So the Masons, they had an initiation also with the skull where the wine was inside the skull instead of a cup, like in the Christianism. So they had the skull to drink the knowledge of the person. We can say, which one is weirder? I don't know, it's, it's culture, it's just a tradition. So initiations is not about the shape of the things, it's about the content of the things. The rest is just tradition. It's like if you go to another country and you judge the traditions of other countries just because you wasn't born there. So, no. There are many ways to celebrate an initiation. That's, that's it. So when we speak about the concepts of the traditions of initiation, we have to remember that the... Um, the traditions are related to things that happened before in the common days with the common tools for that moment. So a tradition is that you still use something that in that time was normal. That's why in some traditions of initiations, they use, uh, they use swords, they use caves, they, um, they use candles and these kind of things. But because in that time when those ceremonies, celebrations were done, those were the normal tools, okay? So of course that now by tradition, some of us keep doing that, but actually it's just tradition to hold the idea of from where it, become, it became that tradition. But that's it, it it's only that. Hmm? Uh, so from Africa, Asia, Middle East, Europe, America, Australia, from all these territories, many traditions kept from this initiatic um, process. So all these initiatic traditions came from the old civilizations in the past that they were built with the idea that they had to know God and understand the Creator. And the way to understand, to know create the Creator is through the knowledge of the things that the Creator has created. So it was not through the faith to the Creator, it was by knowing the things that the Creator has done. The body, the knowledge of the body, the knowledge of the soul, the knowledge of the spirit. So they created this kind of path and universities where they could go through tests to exams to prove their bodies, the knowledge of their bodies, the knowledge of their souls, the knowledge of their spirits, 
so they could get closer to the knowledge of God and to God itself, to the creator itself. Hmm? So this is why an initiatic path was created in the, um, in the ancient civilizations like Egypt, like Mesopotamia, like, um, like the Atlantean civilizations. So now from where these initiation paths began uh, in the civilizations, it came from much older, from very in, in another time, hmm? uh, which is the first time when humans started to spread along the world following the animals in the migrations. So when they were nomads, when we were nomads and we started to move through the planet, we did it because of the change of the weather, we were following the animals in their migrations and so on. So usually the animals we, uh, were following um, lakes or, um, or um, wells uh, inside the, the, the ground or the flow of the rivers. So, um, so we humans, we also were following these rivers and this was the reason why we started to um, understand that by moving ahead, we were learning new things. We were knowing many other places. We were reaching the divine. We were knowing about the stars, about the earth. So um, the cultures of that time understood that when they were moving through this kind of path, they were learning about the planet, the world, the nature, the animals, and also about themselves. So they could teach others. And that's why every year they would send the new ones to this kind of natural path in forests, the desert, the rivers, the mountains. They would send these young people to have this initiatic um, uh, process in which they would understand the nature of the world. Mm -hmm. That's how it began the tradition of learning, of acknowledging the world, and then, of course, to create the civilizations and this kind of initiatic path that developed into universities. So all this to try to understand what is an initiation. Basically, an initiation is the things that we do every day when we wake up. Every day we, can, we wake up, we are initiating something, a new day, something new, okay? So something new to learn. Every time that we learn something, for tiny that it could be, is an initiatic pro process. Every time that we are moving forward to do something new, to learn something new, to share something new, we are doing an initiatic process. So whenever, so the good thing about the initiation is that it's not reactive, it's active. This means that reactive would be if something is pushing me to do it, so I react and I do it, but an initiation process is acting, is an e, is, an, is a, is taking action because it's something that I am willing to do. It's something that I am willing to learn. Hmm? That's why that's an initiation. What we are doing in this path, the path of the I am, is an in initiatic process. We are doing an initiation, which is day by day we are learning something new. So throughout all this long process of the year, two years, we are learning something every day and the initiatic process will be the 22 of February, 2022. So that would be the moment of the initiation to end with this, um, with this process. Hmm? So I said the date, not the place. So it doesn't matter if you cannot come to Egypt, you will be also connected live streaming, we are gonna be sharing all of this online too, okay? So the week, the physical week invites us to make an initiatic path, even if we are 
during the lockdown inside our home. Hmm? It's just to practice during these days what it is to do an initiative path. So the task for this week will be to create our own initiative path. So it doesn't matter if you do it inside your home, in the garden or in the neighborhood or in the entire village or city you are in or in the entire reg region, it doesn't matter. Whatever it's better to, for you to be adapted to. Uh, this is just a practice, okay? So what we are gonna do is to decide for, for which size will be our initiative path. And we will, um, we'll, we, we will attach in our concepts um, which chakra will be related to which place in our, um, in our space. So I can choose whether a church, a school, etc., or the bathroom, the kitchen. Okay, so um, so whatever you feel to connect with the chakras, we are going to work in this path. Hmm? So in the post for today, I wrote at the end in each chakra which places could be. Hmm? So we have to choose um, to choose. Um, nine places, we have nine chakras. So nine places within our house, in the neighborhood or in the city, whatever. You just choose the, the, the place and whether it is inside your house or in the entire city, you pick these nine places and then you put in each one of them the attribute of one chakra. So, for example, if it is a home, I would say the heart chakra is the, is the kitchen, the sacrum is the bathroom, the root chakra is the, the bed, for example. Hmm? Don't do it on a paper and think about, I'm doing my path on a paper. Okay, or on a table, I put stones and I decide each one of the stones is a chakra and I do my path mentally. No, we are not doing that. <laughs> we are, we need to walk the path. So we have to, even if you want to put, I don't know, a glass of water, a stone, a plant, whatever, to refer to that chakra, but it should be separated in different places because you have to walk to those places. You have to practice it by walking okay so so just to let you know um every day we are gonna go to a specific place to a specific spot hmm? tomorrow is the day of the third eye so tomorrow we go to the third eye hmm? everyone we go there to this to the spot that refers to the third eye hmm? so don't follow um don't make the mistake here i'm not i what i said in the blog is that that the alignments would be in the other side this week hmm? the alignment but the days are going exactly as i explained it okay third eye tomorrow is the third eye hmm? So tomorrow um, we start the third eye, we go, we do the task there, the task I will say tomorrow, of course, we go do the, the task there. The next day, the throat chakra, the next day, the, the heart, okay? So according to the day, and the crown chakra will be done the 10th day in the, in the Taurus, because the Taurus come back to the crown chakra. Hmm? So each day we're going to go and do a different task um, all together, everyone together.
Hmm? So um, this, this week will be a practice for what we are going to do then in the blue moon in August. Hmm? So remember, the alignment will be, this week will be from below above. Okay, down, going up. Hmm? So that's the change that we are going to do during the alignments. But the days are the same. The days, tomorrow, third eye, the other day, third chakra, and so on, going down. Hmm? Okay, so let's go to the information for today. Today we changed the vibration. The vibration for today is ha. The statement for today is I am the universal designer. So the reason why is I am universal designer is because the sound ha in the in the Atlantean alphabet means designer, the one that designs the reality. Hmm? And the letter a, the sound a means the universe, the beginning. Hmm? 